Hey, what's up guys, this is Val from Dreamlight. So in today's video, I wanna cover a little bit about the built-in IRA render settings. And I get this question a lot. Uh, people are a little bit confused on how to use it and what kind of settings are best. So first of all, if you haven't you know, opened this menu on your end, you can find it on render, render settings, all right? And I have a docked here at all times, so I can always access it. Now, the most important settings you can find in the environment sub tab. And you gotta make sure that you don't have any environmental maps added. So if you have one map added here, you gotta click here and choose none, or just simply click on default to reset everything. That looks something like this, all right? Now, dome, and scene means that you know do means that you're using this settings these settings over here the iray render kind of like a sunlight and sky uh, global illumination solution and scene means that you can also on top of that use any lights you create over here like spotlights point lights and so forth if you don't want to use these lights here you can just use dome only all right now draw dome means obviously you are playing or attaching the background as created by iray okay now a lot of people don't know this but you know you can see that there is a ground over here like a fake ground i can just zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on it's like a fake ground and she's also casting a shadow onto it and you can pretty much control the ground at the bottom of the environment sub tab where it says draw ground okay if you click that off it's not going to cast the shadow take that on and the shadow is there now on top of that you can also control the shadow intensity okay so you can click on here and maybe select 0 0.5 which will then lessen the shadow or the intensity but only on the ground, not on the character or any other objects, just on the ground, okay? Very important. Let's go back to normal. All right, on top of that, you have something called ground position mode. Currently it's in auto, and auto means that it automatically tries to find where the, kind of the lowest point in your scene is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you don't want specific items to dictate or decide for you where the ground is. So you can, in that case, switch to manual. In manual mode, you can change the uh, ground origin or Y, so to speak, and decide, hey, I want my ground to be over here. And suddenly our model is in deep mud, all right? So let's go back to auto. Now the basic function, I'm going to cover everything, but the basic fun function is, you see the horizon, you can click on horizon blur and just make it more appealing if you want to, all right? We can undo that and go back to normal. Obviously you have something here called rotation, which is dome rotation, let me just find it. There it is. That's how you rotate the sun around your character. Okay. This doesn't change the height of the sun. It just orbits around your character. You can decide or scene, right? Depending on what you're lighting. Now, the thing is, if you want to change the height of the sun, you've got to choose a different time. And so it becomes a little bit tricky, all right? You have this kind of like a date you set the date like a month and so forth a year or so right you can also set latitude longitude and select a specific portion of the world which you want ira to mimic and also you can set the time and obviously at noon the sun is very high very sharp and if you then go into a bit later at night you've got a different sky color and the shadows are way longer on the ground as well now the problem with this is as soon as you start you know changing the time the sun also starts to orbit because naturally our sun when it sets 
it changes rotation as well, right? And you can see that. This is kind of cool, but also can be a little bit annoying if you want to really control the sound. So unfortunately, there's not much you can do here. You have to counter this with a rotation. So after you kind of say, okay, I like this height, but I want to rotate it, then you can re-aim the sun here and just, you know, say, okay, I want this to be like, like so. Now, a cool setting, and not a lot of people know about it, is you can also control the uh, sun disk intensity. And the sun disk intensity, is, this is just like the sun alone. Let's say you want to have a little bit less intense sun. And the sun alone, nothing else, right? There's still lighting from the sky. I'm going to go ahead and pretty much make it very, very soft, almost non-existent. Or very harsh, for that matter. All right? Now, another setting which is very useful is obviously disk scale. And this dictates how large the sun is. The larger it is, the softer the shadows. You can see it's very soft shadows on Vicky or our model, Elisa, by the way. And if you go vice versa, we get really sharp, sorry about that, really sharp shadows on the ground. All right. Now, there is an additional thing that's very cool in here, and it has to do with, let me just look at it here, is a blue and red tint. You can tint the sun there in a bluish tone or the red tone. It's a quick way of doing that. Not my favorite, but it's there, okay? Now, let me show you a few more settings. So we also, if you go up here, you can control with this slider over here, environmental intensity. You control both the sun and the sky at the same time. So this raises both intensities. Now, on top of that, you can counter and say you want to have a lower sun, so we can do that as well, right? So that controls them both. However, raising this does not increase the intensity of any other lights like spotlights, point lights, and so forth. So if you want to control all the lights, you go to tone mapping, and the one single setting you can just focus on in here is this one, film ISO, the old 80s intensity or you know of the film, so to speak, right? Today we don't have film, we have digital cameras, but, and this is just a representation, but if you increase this to 300, you're gonna get three times more intense everything. That's the sun, that's the sky, and also all these lights you add here, right? It's like a master slider. Kind of important and cool. Uh, next thing you wanna control here is white point. And that is if you go a little bit more blue tone here, you end up with the orangish tinted image. And if you go, for instance, a little bit more orangish, you end up with the blue toned image. And I prefer this way over the other one, which was the red and blue, right? Then we can choose just white to go normal. And there's obviously, you know, saturation, which is black and white, crushed blacks, which controls kind of like contrast or black level, uh, burn highlights, you can make the bright parts really sparkle and so forth, right? But really, let's not just worry about that. Let's just jump quickly into progressive rendering. So this is kind of when we're going to end up and do a lot of tweaking. And a lot of people get confused by this. You want to have rendering quality enabled on. You want to have max samples, 15,000. And then the only thing you need to worry about is the rendering quality. Uh, one is kind of like a default value. You can do 0 0.1 for a lot quicker render but with a lot more noise, but you can still get you know, good representation of what you're uh, doing, right? Or you can increase this to 10, 100, 500, 2000, whatever is needed to get less noise in your render, okay? Now, that's pretty much it. On top of that, just a quick note regarding the bloom filter. I see a lot of people really confused by it and don't know how to use it. And by all means, it's, it's kind of confusing. And at times, I prefer to add the bloom or glow effect in, in Photoshop, like in Photoshop, in Photoshop, right? But what you can do here is obviously turn it on. So just click on Enable. 
and it has three settings the radius the threshold and the brightness scale by default they are all whacked <laughs> totally wrong and what i usually do is 0 0.3 10,000 and 0 0.3 that's kind of like a normal standard mode that works pretty well for outdoor, outdoor renders but you might want to tweak it on a case-to-case -case scenario it depends on how much bright surfaces you have but you can see it creates some nice shining effect and all that the problem is that the default setting causes a lot of normal surfaces to really be um i don't know what the word for it like blurry as you can see right it kind of looks extremely awkward so you gotta raise this to above 10k or just around 10k depending on your intensity of course right so radius is just how much glow you have and brightness just how much it glows and threshold is when it starts to glow the higher the number the brighter it initiates on and guys that is pretty much it i want just this to be a quick intro so you know the basic settings so it's not confusing for you and you can just go ahead and play with those and if you want to know more about iray and iray settings obviously i've got you know i've created a lot of tutorials about this and one of them is so I go to my shop and follow the link below this video and i think it's on this page over here uh, it's called something sharp something soft i really recommend this as a starter tutorial for how to use iray and all that it's it's just the ultimate way of you know learning how it works and so forth and also how to blend other lights into the equation so guys that is pretty much it that's what i want to cover i hope you enjoyed this video learn a few things go ahead have some fun with iray check out this uh, tutorial and i'll see you next time